Ooh, I see something over here in the distance. What is that? Is that a sail? Ah, oh, no, no, it's not. But this over here, we're standing close to this. There's no signs, there's no shulker box. And what about that one over there? Let's approach. I think we've made a sail over here as well. This, my friends, delights me greatly. If you do not remember, we offered up this for the low, low price of nine diamond blocks. And we've made two sails. So over here at the depot, should see 18 diamond, wait, wait a minute, it was diamond blocks. Someone misread the sign. I've been robbed. I actually don't care. I'm just happy to put these materials in the hands of other hermits so they can put it to use, which is kind of the idea behind our new iBuy store. And my friends, I've actually been working on a couple of things over here on the fourth floor, which is where we are located. And I've also gotten some feedback from the hermits, which was not what I expected. Apparently, this shop is deceptively simple. They see this row of redstone lamps, a selection system over here. They expect the whole system to be more complicated. And so a few hermits have actually had trouble using this. But the good news is we have made a couple of sales. And what I'm going to do for the time being is just keep them all here. So I can kind of like keep track of how many diamonds we're making in total. Now for me to just come over here and access these chests one by one is obviously a little bit tedious. And that, my friends, is why I have created a secret entrance. And for all of you commenting, this is just a resource pack, okay? The painting is animated. It's a beautiful thing. But we can pop through here and, aha, a secret back area with a nether portal that I hooked up. I just figured for quick and easy access, I'd set my own little nether tunnel up here. It's just a temporary access thing, not a proper tunnel. And it'll allow me quick travel from one of my many, many farms that we use to stock up this shop. And speaking of that, I've been putting a lot of thought into how I want to stock this shop up. You see, it's a little tricky when you're trying to think of all the farms that you have and what needs stocking up when you're in a different location. I've learned that when you come over here and you just see the stock in front of you, you can immediately make a note of where you need to go, right? So skulk blocks, for example, there's some in the hopper here, so we don't need to stock those up. But maybe gold ingots we need to take care of. And then I know exactly what farm I want to go to. And yes, saying it out loud, it does seem all very obvious. But unless what I need to know is directly in front of me, it's kind of hard to remember all the farms that you've built and all the different items that you have. But as soon as we're looking at them like right here, it makes life a lot easier. And so for restocking our shops, we actually have a little system out the back here. If I hit this lever, you'll see that we pull down all of the pistons so they can all be accessed. And then with the trapdoor, I can get in here and just access them one by one. Now the problem here, as I initially saw it, is that we have to go in and manually check to find out when items are low. And I wondered, is this a problem that can be solved with redstone? We will answer that question in just a moment after this ad break. Like me, you've probably encountered connection issues online before. Maybe a website won't load, downloading a file is slow, or worst of all, you have trouble connecting to your favorite Minecraft server. With ExpressVPN, you can connect from different locations around the world. Your connection then takes a different route, and sometimes that's all you need to fix those internet woes. Basically, tricking the internet into thinking you're using the internet from a different country. Just look at all the countries you can choose from. Best of all, this allows you to access more content from your streaming services like Netflix, Disney+, and more. Connect to Canada, and you can watch amazing movies like The Pianist and Goodfellas. Connect to France for Back to the Future and Catch Me If You Can and Germany for the Shawshank Redemption and Inception. You get the point. With ExpressVPN, you can get more content out of your streaming services. If this interests you, then head over to expressvpn.com Asuma and get three months for free. Use the link in the description box to sign up today. So welcome back to my redstone testing world where we want to adapt this storage module so we can understand the contents of these shulker boxes. And this can be done like so. If we power the sticky piston from further down, we can then put a comparator here, which can actually read the contents of the shulker box on the other side. And the fact that it's empty doesn't really help. So let's go ahead, fill that up, and the comparator turns on. Because of this, we essentially need a complete redesign. It'll work the same way, but what we've gone and done is we've split up this circuit into two components. So we can have one to control the pistons at the bottom and one to control the lamps at the top. And just so it's clear, they are doing the same thing as before. This then gives us space to work with the comparators because we have an issue to solve. 
We're only going to be able to see when these shulker boxes are fully empty. But the thing is, we do actually keep diamonds inside of here. So what we want to do is actually compare the signal strength at one point in time. And we're going to do that using a lectern so that we can select the exact signal strength we want. This then allows us to define how much empty space we want to have inside of a shulker box before we get notified by the redstone lamp. Okay, so now we've got some lamps for each row, and for the last bit here, they have to be soft powered. So, can you see how this one powers the redstone lamp to the side? We just need some additional blocks and the lamps back here. But there is a little bit of a problem here. If I want to see all of the contents, we need all of those blocks to be raised. So I have to do that to get that signal out of there. But then what about restocking? In order for me to access the shulkers, I then need to remove all of those blocks and the comparator system doesn't work. So what's the point of all this? Well, it's just me having fun with redstone, trying to engineer a solution and then getting to the end and realizing there's a fundamental problem at the beginning. Now all of that redstone investigation was driven by an idea that I didn't fully think through. It involved creating some colorful signs to signify the various stock that we need. And for this example, I've kind of picked out the obvious ones, you know, cornflower for cornflower farm, and then the lamps from our magma and frog farm. And then we would have like a wall of shulker boxes, which indicates how much stock we have. So if we don't have as many shulker boxes out here, then I need to go and use the farm again. This then also creates a process of like picking out the materials and taking several trips back and forth. And everything I'm trying to do here is to kind of streamline and simplify keeping the shop stocked up. And this made me realize that the place that I just dumped the materials without thinking is right next door to where I need to go to restock them. And I didn't consider that the temporary idea was actually the best one. I also realized you could put barrels here and have repeaters on top of them. So when you're down in this space, you can kind of click into the barrel and click into here. But the thing is, we store all of our stuff in shulker boxes anyway. So it turned out my bright ideas for item management, well, we already had the best solution right on hand. But any reason to go into a redstone testing world, goof around with redstone and learn some things is always a good thing. And if that disappointed you at all, well, this next project certainly won't. I assure you of that. It actually all started with me renaming some items over at the gold farm. So I figured that I would distinguish some of mine with some color. We've got orange for the different tools that we have. Weapons are green and armor is yellow. I really like how this looks. And this leaves me with a question for you to comment on. Do you think the anvil should be improved and give you the ability to color your item names. I think it would be a cool change to the game. Let me know down below with a comment and if you're enjoying this episode and you're not subscribed to Hermitcraft be sure to do so. I put these episodes out on a regular basis. In fact I've been doing that for about 11 years but uh, thank you for subscribing if you did and now let's head over to the gold farm where I've got some really cool stuff to show you. And this first thing is really quite simple to understand. You can probably suss it out just by looking here right? Yes, I have added the option to lock the hoppers that pick up items, our item filtering system. And if the redstone lamp is on, it means that I want to continue farming. And if it's off, it's just going to let the items go all the way over into the fire. This was, however, a little trickier over here just because the redstone torches kind of needed to send the signal twice over because we doubled up the item filters. But on a recent live stream, we figured out how to do this. And now the area is more functional and looks kind of cool, too. This next bit though is where things get really interesting and I've got to put away all of my items into this chest. You see crafting up our gold ingots it's kind of a hassle. It takes a fair bit of time to just click back and forth over and over again and then you've got to reach into the chests, restock the golden nuggets. There's constant aiming, clicking and it's just a dull task. So I would like to write a auto clicker script to help me with this and that's when I had the idea maybe I could use chat GPT to help me do some coding and I'd like to start with a quick disclaimer this is a system that is trained on large language models and it's often referred to as artificial intelligence but it is a system and it processes language so you give it an input maybe in the form of a question and it goes through this process and gives you an answer the reality here is that it's processing data and it doesn't understand concepts like truth so it can get things wrong and you should keep that in mind at all times when you're using it yourself First of all, we need to ask it a question. Are you able to help me code in AHK, which is auto hotkeys? Fortunately, the answer is yes, which is terrific because here I have a script for auto-generating a world in Minecraft. 
And like with a lot of coding, we're just using some existing code and then modifying it. The main reason we're using this script is because it'll allow us to press Control, Alt and C to start the function. And that function is here and we're going to be removing some of the code below it. So I've kept a few important things. We're going to need a delay between each of the clicks that can be executed with sleep click delay. And then we're going to loop the function we're about to create three times over. This means when we press Ctrl or C, it's going to craft three times over. So inside of the game, we're going to need this clicker to click on the side over here to create a gold ingot, click over there, and then you can see a problem straight away. Where does it put the items? Well, if we get it to shift click, it will move as much as it can into the crafting and then shift click again, and it will automatically move it out down here. Another important component here is making sure that we already have gold in the inventory because you can see this changes as we have different items inside of here. So we always need like a stack of gold ingots so that all of these crafting options are here and where we choose to click will be consistent. So let's start by asking how to create a series of clicks based on the coordinates in the game. The problem here is that I don't actually know how to figure out where those coordinates are on the screen. And so it gave me a bunch of useful options, but the most important one here is that Auto Hotkeys actually has this already built in. And here it is right here. As I move the mouse around, you can see that the numbers update, and this will allow us to click exactly where we need to in the crafting GUI. So the next thing we need to know is how do I hold down the shift key and then release it? And as you can see, ChatGPT spits out some code that we can make use of. So now with our code, we're going to hold down shift. There'll be a slight delay. And then we're going to click at these coordinates, have another delay and click at these coordinates. And then we release the shift button. So let's go ahead and activate the script. And you can see there's a bit of an issue here. It wasn't holding down shift. So next I asked ChatGPT if there was a different option that we could use and it came up with this other method which is called send input. And so now our script looks like this. So now we jump back into the game and run it once more and this time you can now see it's doing what we want. We're also left with some leftover golden nuggets. So I think my final modification is to make this loop four times over. So now we reload the script and run it again and this time it just does it four times over. Now if it were to continue doing that you could see when it clicks over here it starts crafting different things. And that's something to keep in mind because the system doesn't stop there. Oh no, we're going to use my axe next which I left in this chest. And now we're going to break some of these chests and all the items can drop down into a spot where I can easily pick them up. So now when I open up the crafting bench and I press our little hotkey script, you can see, ah, something's gone wrong again. It is very important that you prime your inventory like this with gold ingots. So now when we run the script, we keep picking up the new ingots that we craft into gold. And I can just sit here and press this hotkey over and over again and relax as all of the gold is getting semi-automatically crafted. And that is how we're able to have such an insane amount of gold blocks. I can keep crafting this stuff up and then we can turn them back into ingots for bartering. This farm is ridiculously OP and that just saved me a lot of time. So next I built a cage of trapdoors around the chest so that when I broke them, all of the nuggets would sort of fall down into the same space. And interestingly, when we break the ones that have hoppers behind them, some of the nuggets actually land on the edges of the hoppers themselves, but then the hoppers end up actually picking those up. And then I made the classic mistake of breaking too many chests, including ones full of zombie piglin heads. But anyways, I got to work using our auto clicker and crafting up tons and tons of gold. And eventually that kind of backfired as the rest of the items just despawned because they'd been sitting on the floor for more than five minutes. And last of all, I added in something a little extra that would allow us to craft gold blocks too. This is basically a copy paste of what we've coded before, but I've just changed the coordinates so it clicked on the gold block in the crafting interface. So thanks to all of that, I have swiftly crafted up a double chest full of gold blocks. And I want a way to evenly distribute them to these piglins. You see, there was a mistake I made with this design. The hopper chain means that gold ingots coming through will always go to the first one and it takes a long time for the dropper and hopper below to fill up before it starts going to the next one. And I have a solution for this, but where I've been indulging in some redstone lately, I thought I would share with you some ideas for splitting up items. 
Now an easy splitter is something like this where you just drop in your items and split them evenly up. It gets a little more complicated when you want to split them up again down below, but we're trying to split this into five equal stacks. With this idea, we have items flowing through the hoppers and the ones below them are locked until an item reaches the end. So if I go and drop in a bunch of gold ingots, you'll see this activates. And at the moment it does, the hoppers down below are unlocked for a brief moment, allowing all of the gold to be evenly distributed. And here you go. Pretty cool system. And here's another really cool and simple concept. We're going to use a chest boat, just put the ingots in the middle, and you can see they're instantly getting split up into each of these hoppers. And that is because the hitbox of this actually goes over all five of them. But from here, things would get a little messy as our piglins are spaced out like so. So the system we're going to build on Hermitcraft will be a very familiar concept. We are going to distribute with a minecart hopper going over the hoppers and then coming back again. And to do that, I had to build a custom unloader over here, which fits snugly underneath of that thing. Fortunately, it doesn't interfere with the redstone here. If I just push this thing in, you can see it's sort of held back by this fence gate right here. So when we put in some items, it's able to pick up just under 20 at a time when it comes in here. And that's important. Did that thing have like 35? Okay, well it gets enough. It gets enough to do what it needs to do. So now when it gets up the top here, it's going to distribute two of those ingots into each of the hoppers. And this thing is going to stop working once the minecart hopper is empty, which will of course mean that the chest above it is empty too. All right, so this time when it comes back, it's empty, and then it's just sitting there waiting for us to put some gold ingots into this chest. And I'm pretty sure that's gonna be like the last modification to this project, but you know, I keep tinkering with it. So this episode has been somewhat different than usual so far, and I didn't have a particular project that I wanted to focus on next, but some ideas are brewing for what we might do with this space where I want to expand. But one thing I do want to sort out is the basement level down here, and I really don't know quite where this is going to go, but I know that it's just what I want to chip away at and work on. So since the last time we saw it, you might see it's getting a little bit more developed. The key thing over here, though, is that I want to create a viewing balcony for these caves that we lit up. No mobs can actually spawn in here because I put glow lichen down, and I love the atmosphere, and I just want to be able to look out into this mysterious dark cave. So I've got some time to work on it, and um, let's see where exactly we go with this. There's a lot of stuff behind me that needs taking care of for this project. And so a couple of hours later, I was drawn in a completely different direction. I ended up working on the entrance to the skeleton farm. I like this right here, but as you go down into the room, it really like comes to life, especially with another animated painting. The skull is obviously very fitting. And let's quickly get rid of some of these noisy skeletons. Yes, the farm doesn't have an on-off switch, but now we've got a really great environment in which to add something like that if I want to do. I'll let you take in all of the details here. I just threw down some blocks that felt right in the right positions, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. The only thing now I've got to do is tidy up this little tunnel that gives me access to the redstone. And of course, that's where we go to pick up our bones from this chest, but currently that shulker box isn't full. So not quite as interesting, but certainly aesthetically pleasing. Over here, I've tidied up these walls with a combination of mud blocks and jungle wood that looks really nice, pleasant. We've got some candles over here, we've got a few odd details to make the place look a little more interesting, and it tidies up this corner nicely. Over in this space though, I'm not really sure what exactly I'm going to put around all of this redstone. As of yet, I, I just don't know quite where that's going to go. This spot over here I've got sussed out though, we need to change out these stone bricks, but the viewing platform looks awesome the mud bricks next to the blackstone amazing and when you walk up here for a view it's uh yeah it's a really interesting sight and i think i've now found my way to a conclusion with this project you'll see that i've filled in all of the gaps and integrated what was here to create you know something that feels a little bit more lived in let's say as we come around the corner here you'll see that we're going to create another viewing platform that goes off into that cave. And the view here isn't quite as dramatic as this part of the cave is relatively small, yet it does actually go a fair ways back, but we don't really get to see back here. So now I'm kind of left with this awkward space here where I might move some of this redstone, and that means all of this will be tied up nicely together. And then above the spruce here, 
we're going to create like a wall that goes up to the top, put in a black ceiling, and that will kind of surround this redstone, but give it a place to be looked at. Because redstone always gets hidden away, right? And with this project, we want to put some of it on display. Well, I did not know where this would end up, but we have finished the basement. All the loose ends are tied up, the redstone is all on display, and in this area you can see, well, there's a bunch of wood up there, and then it goes to black concrete. We've sort of embraced the darkness somewhat, and we got our viewing platform with the cable kind of sussed out too, so everything looks really good. And I point that out because in other parts of this area, yeah, there's things like this left over. And it feels really good to get just another part of the base together. There's not too many loose threads around here now. And so I think we're done this episode, but there's just one more thing that I wanted to inform you about. And just in case your memory needs jogging, we have the TCG game that Vintage Beef built on the server, a trading card game full of us hermits. And the news is, this is now an IRL thing. You can actually pre-order yourself a Hermitcraft TCG game box. You can get booster packs. The cards and the game itself are being brought into the real world. Beef has a big Twitter thread about this, and I'll link it in the description box down below. The reason I'm telling you about this is because the pre-order to get your hands on these cards will end soon. So for all the information and answers to your questions and where to go to get your hands on these, check out that Twitter thread. It will be linked below in the description box. And on that note, I'm ending the episode. So while you're down there, leave a like. Thanks for the support, and I'll see you soon in another episode of Hermitcraft. Bye-bye.